Hi, just received a package, and we all know what that means, it's experimentation time. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and as I just said in the intro, I've received a package. What is it? Well, you probably know by the title, but this is a loudspeaker crossover, which uh, it's a two-way. Uh, the only issue is how I'm going to connect my test points. Where the hell is the input? It says B here treble here and I do not see uh, it must be these two large cutouts that say positive negative must be the input so you'd put probably um, spade terminals on there I reckon those holes are too big for PCB pins as I wanted to do but all well and good hmm. I'm not sure what the crossover point is nor am I sure what the um, decibel per octave is uh, for the filter order but that latter part is not that important what I might do is I might see if some spade terminals fit in these said holes uh, I just happen to have three left nice so they do actually fit in there just nicely I might add bit of a tight fit so they're not going to fall back out when I turn it over and I can solder it on that side what I might do however is I might reverse engineer this back to a schematic so we can actually see for reference how it's all laid out don't know if I can measure the inductance of that coil I probably can but uh, yeah give me a few minutes and uh, I shall return shortly and there we have it there I don't have a meter that can measure inductance so I still don't know what the value of that is, but I don't think it's being any higher than the micro Henry range. We've got this inductor and C1 here forming our low pass filter going off to our base driver and C2, R1, R2 and this PTC uh, or poly switch, fuse, whatever you want to call it, um, forming a high pass filter going off to the tweeter. That's it. It's dead simple. As I said earlier, I don't know any more specifications on that, except that these look like 5 watt devices. Somewhere in the order of 5 watts. They're 470k each. So, because they're in parallel, that's going to halve. Um, looking at 235k, two, all said and done. So that actually really limits the amount of power going into your tweeter which means it shouldn't sound so obnoxious and shrill. Now I also want to point out one other little detail. The laptop output is a headphone output. There is no line out functionality on that laptop. And because of probably how the DAC works inside that um, laptop's uh, AC90 chip, it's not really good for connecting up to an amplifier because you'd have a lot of switching noise in there. I really need something with a line output. And then it occurred to me, I've got an interface that I connect my guitar to the computer to, to record. That has a line out on it. And it is controlled by the system volume. Why not use that? That'll be the basis for my test when I actually hook this up to the speaker cabinet. We'll do a sound test using the Mini 1-1 amplifier and music source coming off of the uh, interface. But for now, I'm going to solder these in and then solder some probably some jump leads coming off here so I can connect fly wires to it to do some testing. Got everything set up now. I'm using my homemade uh, variable power supply. Got a multimeter hooked to its output just to keep an eye on the voltage. I'm keeping it at 9 volt. I've put a piece of uh, tin wire across that connector to 
short the load on off switch on. I will make up a switch for it one day. Frequency generator set at 600 millivolt output, currently at 60 hertz. Going into the Champ 1 watt amplifier that is connected to the power supply. That goes into the crossovers input. The base driver's output goes to the dummy load in the background there and the oscilloscope. And as we can see, we've got a waveform on the screen. Now, as I said, I want to find out what its cutoff frequency is. So the current um, scale I'm on is not going to be adequate enough. So I'll change to the 100 hertz to 3 kilohertz range. And we're more than 100 hertz. Alright. Uh, ignore that output voltage at 8.42 volts or whatever it says. It's on times 10. Um, it's more like 800 millivolt. Now, what am I doing? I'm winding the frequency up. Alright, the amplifier's output is not that great. Okay, we're at 600, 700 hertz. Uh, I reckon the cutoff frequency is around the kilohertz. One kilohertz, it should start rolling off. And yes, it's starting to roll off, but not at one kilohertz. More like at three kilohertz. Interesting. All right, let me change to the 3K range. And I'll make it roll off. It's rolling off, rolling off, rolling off. Wow, it's getting up there. Yeah, I want to say at 25 kilohertz it's really non-existent, but it rolls off at 3 kilohertz, which is about right. Now I want to know what the treble is doing Uh, and what I mean by that is where it starts increasing its signal strength as opposed to when the bass rolls off. Now, currently, with it connected to that, I can't see anything. There is no signal. Maybe because the bass driver isn't loaded, bass driver section isn't loaded, because this amplifier does not work unloaded. I forgot about that. Um, Alright, so how about we just stick uh, this output directly into the oscilloscope without loading it? I've got no other way of loading it. The dummy load, excuse me, the dummy load connected to the base section. And I'll connect the oscilloscope directly to the flux capacitor. And now we have an output. Right, while well, we're at 3 kilohertz. Might just dull that voltage right down so I can see it better. Now, wind up the frequency. It's remaining relatively flat at uh, above 3 kilohertz, which is what I'd expect. So let me change to 100 hertz to 3 kilohertz. Now, at 140 hertz, we've got very little output. We've got an output, but it's not what I was expecting. Around about 4 kilohertz mark, it starts increasing to where our base voltage was, which is around about 5 and a bit volt. So, okay, the crossover frequency of this is 3 kilohertz. Okay, before I get too happy and pull the speaker apart. I just want to, using the interface output over here, see how the speaker sounds on that one watt amplifier now. Yeah, okay. That still sounds terrible. Okay, 
So, now I need to crack open the speaker and cut the wiring to connect the um, crossover in. Okay, so this goes to the tweeter. So I'm going to cut him there and there. Uh, no, that's actually our input. Alright, that one goes to the tweeter. So, as it's all got to come out anyway, I'm going to bugger that off. Forgot I've got to remove all this junk first. Okay, I've got the crossover cobbled in there. Didn't make any difference. Okay, maybe that tweeter is not the best. Could be. I mean, judging by all the screws are all rusted at the ends, it indicates to me that this has been out in a harsh environment like in someone's shed. So, moisture could have ingressed into here and damaged the um, diaphragm. It's a possibility. It shouldn't sound that shrill, even with a crossover. Unless it's just a crap tweeter to start with. I have eliminated the buzzing and weird sounds that were coming out of the tweeter by not using the headphone output on the uh, laptop rather using the line out on the interface which from now on is how I'm going to test amplifiers if I'm using the laptop Trouble is way too high. Okay, that's just a loop, but I made that loop up last night. But I am going to use the crossover in this, but I think I'm going to replace all the screws anyway. But I think this speaker cabinet could actually do with new drivers including a proper bass driver. I can get a response one from JCAR 8 inch and they have a better uh, better sound to them plus they cut off at 3 kilohertz. I'm not sure what this one cuts off at but yeah the highs are terrible on this so the only way to um, verify is to replace the tweeter I was going to have two of them in parallel, but I'm not so sure now. Hang on a minute. I was about to finish this video up and start editing when I realised how this treble section is wired. So that's the PTC, which is like a poly switch fuse, which has a low resistance normally, but when too much current goes through it, that heats up and the resistance increases. That's wired in parallel with these two large resistors. And so basically that PTC is effectively shorting these resistors out. So it's the same as having the tweeter connected directly to the bass driver as it was before. That's why it doesn't sound any different. So the idea of this is 
when too much current goes through this PTC, the resistance changes, therefore raising its resistance alongside this resistance, parallel resistance, limiting the amount of current going through to the tweeter, and obviously dulling down the amount of uh, power going into the tweeter during a fault condition. But, um, yeah, that kind of makes it useless. But uh, maybe, maybe not. <coughs> well, that proved nothing. Didn't think it would actually change anything. Um, so tomorrow what I might do is I might go to JCAR, buy another piezo um, horn driver for that box. I've lightly screwed the base driver back in. All the wiring is disconnected now. Um, uh, I might also see if I can find certain type of connectors. I don't know if I'm going to buy a base driver tomorrow as well. Probably should. It might be a good idea, but yeah. Anyway, as it stands, I'm going to leave this video here and we'll pick this saga up a little later. Anyway, on the Astro 30, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe down below. And you can always become a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Anyway, the links are in the description as usual, guys. This is the Astro 30 saying see ya. Have a great day.